Hey the internet. So, I know everybody's doing like Christmas stuff and everything vlog wise um, around now, which I will do, but today I'm going to be vlogging about this. Um, I know it's backwards. Basically, um, it's the religious case for gay marriage. It's a really interesting article. I'll link it in the sidebar. I think the article brought up some really good points. I haven't fact checked any of this. Um, I'm kind of taking the article at face value, which I know is very bad, but um, I, from what I remember, from you know when I read the Bible and went to Catholic school for nine years, it's true, from what I remember. But don't just take mine and Newsweek's word for it. The first thing they say is that kind of in response to the whole Bible and Jesus define marriage as between one man and one woman and. Therefore, gay people can't get married. Newsweek points out that while the Bible and Jesus say many things about love and family, neither explicitly defines marriage as an act just between a man and a woman. The Bible actually has a lot of cases where marriage isn't just between one man and one woman. In fact, a lot, if not most of the marriages in the Bible are between one man and many women. Um, especially in the Old Testament, polygamy was a big part of the Old Testament because if a husband and wife couldn't get pregnant, the husband still had to pass down his seed and get an heir, and so he'd have to do with as many women as possible to get a son. For example, some of the biggest names in the Bible. Abraham slept with his servant when he found out his wife was infertile. Jacob fathered children with four different women, two sisters and their servants. Abraham, Jacob, David, Solomon, all polygamists. Religious people who, you know, base marriage being one man and one woman in the Bible always look to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were never officially like married in a church, never really had benefits like marriage does now. And so if you think about it, Adam and Eve were kind of the first untraditional marriage couple. Yeah, they were married under God, but not under a church and not um, under a government. So to base what we consider marriage today on a marriage that really wasn't just seems kind of backwards and really not a good point at all. Even thinking through all the married couples in the Bible, you can't really think of that many. Um, Noah and his wife, and Moses and his wife are about all I can think of right now. And then of course, you have the epitome of family, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. But even they are an unconventional trio family. Mary, pregnant before she even married Joseph. Sure, it was with God's kid, but, I mean, that was like the most unconventional marriage of all, and look, I mean, Jesus. Even like Jesus and Peter, the first pope, were emphatically against marriage. Jesus even says, um, Leave your families and follow me. Um, in Matthew, he says there will be no marriage in heaven. Um, and he condemns con divorce. Apostle Paul even said um, celibacy is the Christian ideal and family stability the best alternative. Marry if you must, he told his audiences, but do not get divorced. Um, I mean... How can we take just bits and pieces of what everything says, what everyone says, and ignore what doesn't fit? Um, we need to take it all as a whole or fit it to change our society, I think is the huge point of this, this article is trying to make. Up until even the 70s, preachers were condemning biracial marriages because of the Bible. Well, now to condemn a biracial marriage is blasphemous, almost. I think the most important point the article makes is that when religion tries to 
take the ground and s oppose gay marriage, it always just cites specific arbitrary parts of the Bible. And the proponents for gay marriage tend to focus on the bigger picture, which is love. Jesus' greatest commandment was love each other. And I think if you read into that, it would, it would be love each other and let everybody love who they want to and show it how they want to. See ya.